Hey everybody, welcome back. We are going to do another track from Lemuria because the styles are all over the place and the approaches were uh, not maybe not as different as you might have assumed, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So this one is the Lemuria Sky City theme. Uh, you might remember that there was a Sky City combat track that Kingsile had me write before this as kind of a promo into the world of uh, Lemuria. So there was a combat version of this track. So this was the one track going into the Lemuria world's proper soundtrack where I basically had a, an idea kind of sketched out here. So the description was retro futuristic. The zone is Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers mixed with mid-century suburbia. The zone theme can sound peaceful and quirky with a strong mid-century feel. Everything's supposed to be utopian, but there's a nasty secret buried under the pleasant surface. So this piece relies heavily on what was sort of a movement in like the 50s and 60s. Sometimes it's called like lounge music which is more just sort of easy listening music. It sort of transitioned into a style called exotica, which was incorporated a lot of, I'm going to call them quasi-cultural musics from different cultures, uh, like Hawaiian music influences and maybe Afro-Cuban uh, percussion influences. And there was a lot of interesting musical experimentation that sort of went on in it. There's a lot of like wordless vocals using the human voice more as an instrument rather than than a an explicitly word-based storytelling device. A lot of it was mixed with more orchestral styles and uh, instrumentation. I did listen to a lot of that kind of music to get into the uh, the first combat tune, and then wanted to crank up the suburban element to it because uh, I had some screenshots of this area and. You know, it's kind of more like a, a neighborhood, you know, kind of maybe a Jetsons neighborhood. So it's it's kind of space age and it's definitely sort of futuristic, but kind of in a in a throwback style. I think that's what's referred to as retro futuristic. It's what they back in the day, it's what they thought the future was going to look like. When I was about 16 or so, I was kind of starting to get into music. I had some some studio stuff set up in the basement. And my dad had an old record collection, so I pulled out their record player and popped on, you know, some of dad's old records and listened to them. And a lot of them were of this kind of experimental uh, style. My dad liked a lot of kind of jazz uh, of that era. And so there was like Sergio Mendes and Br Brazil 66, which they just made, create a lot of sounds that were very unique for the time. I also discovered before it became kind of the, the punchline to a lot of elevator music jokes, I discovered Girl from Ipanema by Hobim and Stan Getz. I, I mean, honestly, if you, if you legit give that tune a chance, it is a gorgeous tune with a lot of really great expressive playing in it. And that Strud Gilberto doing the female vocals uh, in Portuguese. It's just a lot of really interesting uh, flavors kind of coming together. And because it was kind of a South American style, and that's sort of where they were mining their ideas, a lot of this loungy and exotic music had a lot of influence from these uh, traditional styles like bossa. So this is uh, definitely inspired by that. All right, so that's enough of me blathering about it. Let's take a listen, and then I'll blather some more.
And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the loop. Uh, I try when I write like the themes and then the combat version of the themes, I try not, not to make them too similar. You hear both of those things a lot in the game. So I try not to test your patience. <laughs> but a lot of the stuff that was in the combat is presented really quickly. And I thought some of it would really change character and be really nice and uh, meaty if it was slowed down a bit. So lots of vocal tracks going on here. Bop, bop, bop. Yeah. Bop, 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 beep, bop. There's that wordless vocal. Uh, I, I have heard some people refer to this as elevator music. And normally I'd be offended, but since I'm kind of trying to write elevator music, I think that's okay. This this one, I, I, I wanted it to be cutesy. There's definitely some kind of knowing winks to the player here that this is you know pretty cheesy and the characters you're interacting with are just kind of a little robotic and a little, you know, a little more cheery than I think they have reason to be. The artist named Esquivel, who did a lot of music kind of like that, I, I definitely modeled some of it after his style. And there was always kind of like a contemporary for the 50s and 60s, kind of a contemporary rhythm section with drums and bass and guitar and keys. He also experimented a lot with uh, like electric pianos and electric guitars. So there are both of those in here, this jazz guitar and there's vibes. So there's a lot of chording instruments going on. Um, notice that like the vibes sort of chill out a little bit when the, the piano comes in. I talked about the vibes being really flexible. Here they are again uh, in a completely different style than the Ursai Village. So setting up a really kind of swinging bachelor pad kind of vibe. And then the acoustic bass that I first brought in for the uh, Hawaiian Ursai Village. So this line here, dun, 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 dun. I came up with these little chords first and then this line plays nicely over the top of them. Pizzicato strings were a part of like the lounge movement that I borrowed heavily from because I wanted it to sound cheery, almost suspiciously cheery. And uh, pizzicato strings are definitely uh, just a little bit on the mysterious side, just kind of throws a little question mark on some stuff sometimes. I, I knew I wanted some vocals in some of these other parts, but the beginning I didn't, didn't even occur to me to do this until I was kind of listening to, I had the microphone in front of me, I was listening to it. I'm like, oh, come on, there'd be vocal choir up there going bup, bup. Bup, 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 beep, bup, bup. So I put that in. <laughs> and then they're also kind of echoing that little theremin. I have some fun with the vocal parts. I'm not a singer singer, but I, I enjoy doing it and I think it sounds uh, pretty reasonable uh, and throwing those like little cheesy bits in there was fun. Um, I, it's sort of similar to in Pirate 101 in the Cool Ranch world. I got to do a lot of that spaghetti western and you Morricone wordless vocal that he did and that was a lot of fun too. It's just so the human voice is so expressive that it doesn't even have to be performed real well. You know, put it in there and it's it automatically sounds more human. <laughs> Sometimes if you have like a phrase in your head, you can kind of write some melodies that, that sort of go along with that idea. And so I kept thinking the, the little phrase, nice and easy. And although I wasn't singing it, when I was playing it, I was kind of, you know, nice and easy, nice and easy. When I turn this into a number one pop hit, uh, I'll put those vocals in there. And so I doubled the piano and the vibes here. Vibes, again, really, this is another reason why they're flexible. They can play chords, they can play melodies, they can sustain notes, or they can play nice and short, you know, the cutesy little notes that we have uh, going on here with the pizzicato strings. We got some auxiliary hand percussion, some congas and bongos, which were, again, very much in style for this, this kind of music. Wow. 
and the drum, even a drum kit is playing a little bit. Uh, this part to me was a little bit of a reference to Danny Elfman's score in Edward, Edward Scissorhands. There's a part where they're doing like the suburban ballet where there's the husbands of the house are out all mowing their immaculate, you know, front lawns and they're all moving together in unison and the wives are working in the flower garden and they're all kind of coordinated. This is to me that sort of uh, suburban ballet where everything's just, you know, really, really perfect and kind of makes you think that there's something wrong. <laughs> Yeah, this uh, this comes in. Here's the chords up here in case anybody's anybody's looking at that. Kind of, again, going back to like the 60s and 70s, the Lawrence Welk show, some of the variety uh, hours, just sort of a really saccharine kind of string arrangements. It's it's like, it's nice music. It's well-crafted. It's, you know, it sounds good, but it's just a little, you know, bubble gum a little bit. You know, it's not, not really saying much. kind of soft shoe just little song and dance doesn't mean much of anything i knew after that i wanted to get into a little a little bit more of a spooky situation this was actually audio that i recorded from my ipad and it's an emulation of the model 15 modular synth from moog the famous synthesizer maker modular synths were synths that you you literally put together the different modules to make your own version of a synthesizer. It just lets you get these really cool synthy effects. Kind of neat, and it's sort of different for me to incorporate my like my iPad in the writing process to do something uh, different. Uh, and this next bit is uh, some singing that I am particularly proud of because these chords are pretty juicy. So when I say I really enjoy singing, this is definitely part of what I mean about it. These are four part chords and there are two voices on each line. Let me get the chords in here to try and fill it out a bit. So that was the line that I, just that's the one that I wanted to hear kind of the most of those are the interesting notes in the chords and those notes are just coming out of these chords right it's so if I'm on like the, the the B of a G minor 9 and then it goes to a C9 chord I might go down to, from the B to the B flat looking for the smallest interval to move you know each individual voice by so that was the top part and then I figured out what the next uh, starting on the next note down in a G minor 9 chord I figured out the next harmony <laughs> I think that was probably my favorite harmony. That 11 in the B minor 11 <laughs> was just a hard, really hard note to kind of sing through because it was, it's hard to hear, right? right here. And those like smaller intervals when you're trying to, you know, figure out a harmony here, those small intervals really help kind of smooth the section out, just make it sound nice and smooth, which is obviously what we're going for. Nice and easy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I just find, I mean these, these jazz chords and two fives and stuff are just, they work so nicely and sound so tasty. Here's the bass notes. So I love that part. 
and then it leads really smoothly back into the uh, this melody. Again. So sometimes in the combat theme, I'm presenting some ideas, but they're really fast. And I kind of think of the combat theme as sort of like an overture. Musical films and theater, the piece that plays at the beginning is usually kind of a medley of the themes that you're going to hear in the piece itself. So to me, the combat themes sometimes go that way as I'm writing them where it's it's fast and it's you know everything has to stay up tempo so i don't always have time to present like a full idea so this theme which i started in the combat theme i got to finish the idea out here which was uh pretty satisfying <laughs> Guys, I borrowed a uh, triangle from my dad, who is a percussion player. Uh, I borrowed uh, it for the combat theme. And now I'm reason realizing I used it here too. This is so this is so indicative of music from that time period that they would have had, you know, just the the kind of level of detail, even in something that's kind of a little bit on the cheesy side, would have been so much detail in its construction. The other tune, the, the combat tune is actually, I just opened up the same session. Uh, and then because I knew I was going to use so many ideas from the combat tune, I left it at the beginning here. And then this is the, the main theme over here. So whenever, if I ever needed to like review some chords or whatever, I could go back here and kind of reference them. And then I used the English horn and the bassoon here. They're, they're such a flexible instrument family. They were used a lot in TV orchestras. I'm thinking like, you know, leave it to Beaver kind of era sitcoms because they could sort of be playing while people were talking and it wasn't, you know, super distracting in sort of small pieces. Like you could have a bassoon doing a bass line and the English horn doing like a, a little melody and it sounded nice and full. They sound so playful. So it really was useful in a lot of different places there. So there you go. That's my uh, loungy South American suburban mid-century space age ballet, uh, I guess. <laughs> so if you guys feel like I hit that mark, uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know how you would have approached this differently. This is number two in the musical tour of Lemuria. My plan is to do one more track after this. So please stay tuned for that. Thanks guys. Talk to you later.